Happy New Year. I hope your 2023 is off to a fantastic start. The new year is always a good time to look back on the previous year. Did you make your goals? Did you advance your projects? Is your future outlook brighter than it was this time a year ago? I hope all of those things for you. Today I want to show you my top 10 animals that I either picked up or held back from 2022, plus one honorable mention. I'm going to show you 11 animals that I am taking into the future. Let's check it out. <laughs> Everybody. Happy New Year! I hope that you're doing well. I hope your holidays were safe and healthy and, and you got some time with your family or your friends. You know, sometimes your friends you choose are healthier than your family. All joking aside, I hope it went very, very well for all of you. I want to do one of these year-end videos where I kind of show what I've picked up and what I'm happy about and what I'm moving forward with. And this truly is about me being thankful and reminding myself what I had to be thankful of. I find that I put so much pressure on myself to succeed and to advance and I'm very impatient naturally. All of that causes me to forget some of the wonderful things that I do have to be thankful for. So this video is as much about gratitude, way more about gratitude than flexing or anything like that because also let's be serious like there's other people with YouTube channels with way better collections and way more stuff going on. I'm just a guy on his journey on the business path of what makes sense for me and what projects I want to work on. So I'm pretty excited to share this video with you all and also to have it as sort of a document for myself to look back on. With all that being said, I'm pretty excited about 2023. I have no idea what 2023 will have in store. I'm pairing 20 females this year. I'll be vending and I've really got a strong focus on advancing my business this year. I think the foundation that I've set is really strong and I'm, I, I think I'm primed to really, really advance. So I'm looking forward to it. But how will I advance? It's going to be with these, uh, with these 10 animals. Speaking of being thankful, I got to give huge thanks to Cold-Blooded Cafe for their support on making this channel more and more feasible every day for me. Before I ever was in a business relationship with Cold-Blooded Cafe, I did use their rodents exclusively for a couple years. I'm proud to be aligned with them now. I think you should check them out. You can use the promo code CBC as in Cold-Blooded Cafe, CBC5 for five bucks off your next rodent order. I think you'll see the difference if you try them out. I also got to give huge thanks to Redline Shipping also being very supportive to me. One thing you might not realize is uh, because of my relationship with Redline Shipping, I can ship my animals to you for cheaper and pass on that savings. Maybe it'll be the difference maker when you're choosing who to buy an animal from. I think you should also check out Redline Shipping for your own live animal shipping needs. Use the promo code PROPER5 to get five bucks off your next shipping label with Redline. I bet you'll see the difference in experience if you check them out. If we've not met before, my name is Adam and this is the Proper Royals channel. This is where I document my family's ball python business journey. We document everything right here on the channel. Check out the Linktree app for all the places that you can find us and all the ways that you can get in touch with me. I'd love to connect with you. Also, if you're interested, send me an email at properroyals at gmail.com and I will send you a monthly inventory list no cost no expectations none of that I don't sell your information none of that stuff it's just a list of all the animals that I have available I put them on the list first before they go to morph market and I usually price them pretty aggressively on that list since you've supported me hope to hear from you my animals this year I decided to get out of the chair where I usually film like I got all that dialed in pretty nicely for filming but I was like I need to get into the snake room like this is where the action happens right I wanted to get in here and film from here today especially since we're gonna look at snakes together so let's get right down to it I'm just gonna show you these 10 snakes I'll tell you a little bit about each one of them and why they are so exciting to me the honorable mention snake that didn't quite make it but I'm pretty excited to have I had to include him on the list he is a pickup from Creative Genetics, and he's a VPI Azantic Visual Het Clown male. So he's going to be a powerful male to work into my Clown Azantic project, which are pretty, those are stunning animals. I've got an Enchi female clown, and I've got a super Enchi female clown. I think he's going to go to one of those two so that hopefully we hit some clowns, and obviously they, we would hit Enchi clowns, ideally, especially if, uh, if we went to the super, of course we would. Those would be 100% 
had a xanthic. So then when those grow up, I could have a visual xanthic hat clown to a visual clown had a xanthic and hopefully really knock it out of the park with those pairings and, you know, in two years kind of thing. So I'm very excited. Thanks to Keith from Creative Genetics for that guy. I'm very happy with him. My number nine animal, she is from a collection that I bought back in February from a breeder who I'd done work with before and I'm very familiar with and I bought animals from. He got a promotion and had to move and he said, you know what, Adam, I gotta let, let go of a collection. And I've got a couple animals from him today that are gonna be included in this video. But this girl, she is huge. She was big enough to be a breeder last year, but she didn't go. I didn't get that collection till February, so I can't really see speak of what happened with the pairings beforehand or the timing and that stuff. So this is my first full breeding season with her. She's a blackhead het genetic stripe breeder female. Part of why I'm so excited and part of why she made the list is because of the mate that I got with her is also a blackhead het genetic stripe male and he is breeder size as well. They've been pairing, they've been locking, she is huge. It's very early January right now. I'm super hopeful for this season with her. I don't know that a super blackhead genetic stripe, I've not seen one. I don't know that one's been made. I don't really get caught up in the world's first stuff, but they're rare, I'll tell you that, and it'll be a powerful breeder, whatever I land. Can't wait to see what comes out and what I get in those clutches this year from her. Blackhead het genetic stripe female, my number 10 animal. My number nine animal this year is one that I produced, and she is a fire VPI azanthic visual female. She's doing great. She's in the hold back rack. She's eating, nailing the food. She's on frozen thawed now. So everything is going really great with her. Her contrast is really incredible. Her behavior and demeanor is really wonderful too. She's eating well. I'm excited to hold that girl back. To have a recessive visual plus a codom is kind of that magic equation that I look for in recessive females. Visual plus genes so we can always be improving whatever we breed her to. Fire VPIA Xanthic female, that's my number nine animal on the list this year. My number eight is another one from that collection that I bought. She is a super and she clown. Now she would be higher up on the list if she was mature. She's not, she will be mature, or I'll start pairing her at the end of 2023, end of the 2024 breeding season. But for obvious reasons, a super and a recessive combined are always going to be a powerful breeder, especially when it's a female. Inchy clowns just look fantastic. I know it's sort of seen as basic now, but just visually, what a great platform to start on. I really love Enchi and clowns. My number seven animal is really special to me for a couple of reasons. First, she is banging beautiful, just like aesthetically objectively she's one of the best looking snakes that i have she is a fire pastel and she hypo and a female super clean super bright getting brighter and more vibrant every shed just looking fantastic she's a recessive and she's got three codoms that are super useful across the board fire and she and pastel i know everybody's got opinions about different things but used in the right way those are phenomenal genes there's a reason those are everywhere in our industry part of it's because they've been around a long time but mostly because they're so so useful i got her from Dale at Constricted Reptiles, who speaking of giving thanks, Dale has been one of the best mentors and uh, kind of big brother in the industry that a guy could have asked for. He's always looked out for me and I was able to purchase that animal after working one of the shows with him. And anyhow, I'm real proud to have that animal and I'm very, very happy with her. I can't wait to get her breeding. I gotta figure out exactly what I'm gonna do with her. But I'm loving Hypo, I'm loving all those codoms in there. I cannot wait to get her going. She's eating fantastic, she's on frozen thawed. Life's good. My number six animal, man, I just picked this guy up and he is a terror. Man, he is, he is <laughs> he's the meanest little snake I've got. I got hopes for him though. I got hopes we're gonna be good, good buddies, you know? I picked him up from a local breeder that this is a good like little lesson just in and of itself. Uh, a guy named uh, Mario that breeds locally here. Check him out. I believe he's called Golden Rule Reptiles. I'll put up a link, uh, you know, where you can check him out on on. Instagram. Mario and I did business last year on, on one of my hatchlings and I traded, I actually traded him for an animal last year and we 
we've kept up. We've kept in touch. He's he's here in town in Jacksonville, Florida, and he's a good dude. I saw that he produ he was going for Suma Pides, and he he hit a lot of mahoganies, but he didn't hit the Suma this year. And, you know, I got talking. I said, hey, is one of those going to be available? Oh, it is. All right, let's get talking. <laughs> when I bought him, or when I picked him up, he was like, Adam, I got to tell you, this thing is mean. He goes, I swear, it's it's the only one I'm letting go, or I would I would have I would have given him to somebody else. This thing, he's not nice. I was like, I'll work on him. I'll take care of him. He's doing great. He'll he'll come around. I just got to work with training him. I do a little tap training or a little sp spray bottle when I open the tub and, and I'm not feeding him. So he'll come around a mahogany pied and it's a male. He'll be ready to go next season. Man, I have... I don't even know what I'm going to put them with. I have many female pied options, but all of those pieds are, I say just, they don't have any codoms in them. I've got a really striking orange dream het pied female that'll be ready. So he might go to her. He might go to all of them. I've got, I've got some het pieds that I'm probably going to sell, but maybe I'll keep them and he'll go to them. I don't know. We'll see. But he is beautiful and powerful. I just need him to be cool and chill out before he gets too big for me. My number five animal this is one of these, uh, uh, what do they call, like uh, like the, the car racers that just have like a, you know, a Honda Civic that they, it turns out underneath it as a NASCAR, you know, a sleeper, I think they call it. So this one's a sleeper. I got, uh, and this one actually I'm really excited because of the pair that I got. I picked up two. I got them from Steve's Morph, Steve Casino. Speaking of people that are really great in the industry, anytime you get a chance to hang out with Steve or interact with Steve, you should soak up the experience and the knowledge. Uh, he's a really good dude. Thanks so much, Steve. These two I got, and the, really the female is the one that's the number five on my list. She is a triple head, pied, lavender, VPI, xanthic. So those as a triple would be amazing. What do they call that? A true ghost dreamsicle? Okay, that'd be cool. Is it they call it a true ghost? No, not a true ghost. A snow. That's it. Not the not the ghost. The, not the true ghost. The snow. I get lost in the nicknames. Long time down the path for sure. But the duo combos are amazing too. Azanthic Pides. That's a heck of a project. The lavender snow would be amazing. I'm really excited for a variety of different things. I do, I am going to pair the, and I got the corresponding male, same thing, triple hat, uh, pod lab, xanthic as well. I'm probably going to pair those two together and just see what comes out and then make a decision from there. With the one problem being that everything is 66 percent I, I yeah there's testing and it's just time consuming and money consuming although it would be a huge payoff on this one of course if i, I was able to prove i was proving or uh, breeding triples so we'll see by the time next year comes around i might have some more double visuals that would make more sense in a male to pair i don't know we'll see i'll find out but i know that's a powerful female she's a number five on my list thanks steve Number four on my list. This guy's only number four. I can't believe it. I'm finally at the point, you know, the recommendation, and rightly so, that you always hear is invest in your females early, invest in the best females that you could buy, which could be amazing, could be pretty good. But then when you need the males, then invest in your banger males. And I'm now at the point in my breeding career and business and cash flow and all the stuff that I care about where I was able to start just really focusing on landing some banger males this year. So I picked up this young hatchling. I've actually, I've had them, there were three or four animals that I picked up in collection purchases where I was like, all right, if one sells, then I'll keep this. If that sells, then I'll keep that. He was in that list. So I actually do have him listed. I, maybe I'd let him go. We'll see, but I, I, he's growing a little closer and closer to my heart. You know what I mean? He is a pastel lesser spot nose leopard clown that's a pastel lesser batman and he's visual he would be you know just an incredible addition in my clown project that's why i'm kind of getting closer and closer to being like you know what he's gonna go to the whole backside we'll see i don't know i guess you could you know you could chime me he is on morph market for right now but uh we'll see how it goes but i'm planning on keeping him i'm certainly excited he i have him pegged as my number four animal like that's probably enough to say why don't you uh you know, Adam. The one hiccup would be if I if I were to draw up my perfect Batman project, it probably wouldn't have pastel and lesser in it. So that's where I'm sort of on the fence where like if I sold him, could I replace him kind of deal. We'll see. 
My number three animal, she's a little simpler than some of the others, but she's breeding size, she's pairing, she's locking, and the opportunities are phenomenal with her. She uh, came in a collection I bought back in February, and she is an ultra male pinstripe female and she is plenty big on breeder size she has proven she has bred and laid eggs before again last year i got her in february so i can't speak to what the pairing was up until that point and her timing from the other the other breeder so i really don't know but this year i have her through the whole breeding season and she's been ultrasounded and i've got an ultrasound on the way too so should be able to really dial her in my goal is to pair her with my next animal, my number two animal on the list. I'll tell you about that in just a second. But if he doesn't go and if she starts getting the follicles to size where it's, it's now or never kind of thing, I will pair her with the number one animal on the list. We'll tie all these in here in just a second. All right, my number two animal that I picked up this year, this is one that on paper is, is, is just pretty exciting, but in my heart and like what I'm passionate about going after and producing is really exciting. It's crazy. This dude that I picked up is a male. He's another one that I purchased from Dale at Constricted Reptiles. He is an acid, and when I picked him up, Dale said, well, he's 50% heck clown so I, I paid a little bit more for the 50 percent but not much and through the magic of genetic testing i did get a het for clown positive test back so that acid is an acid male 100 percent het clown i've got him paired with several females this year one of them though is that ultra male pinstripe i'd love to make an acid pinstripe het ultra male het clown because I've got females coming up next year that'll be mature that I held back that I also got in that collection in February that are double het ultra male clowns. Yeah. You see all the layers there of, of excitement over the next year and a half? Holy cow, man. The problem is this, this male acid, he eats like crazy. He's plenty big. I think he's 850 grams or so. I can't get him to lock. I mean, he's only seven, eight months old. He's just huge. It's, it's, I don't even like, I've never fed him more than once a week and he just, it's not like I'm power feeding him or, or you know, force feeding him stuff. He's just, he's just a big dude. I don't know. I'm going to keep an eye on the ultrasound, on the follicle sizes, and if I have to pull him to make sure that the females go and I don't lose the season, I will. But I'm still optimistic that he will figure out how to lock, that one of these proven females will show him the way of uh, what he needs to be getting done. You know what I'm saying? Acid het clown male, again, from Dale at Constricted Reptiles. My number one animal that I picked up this year for all of 2022 is... How do you do a drum roll? Yeah, yeah, okay. That's enough of that. I'll get a sound effect for that. Is a super pastel hypo pied breeder male. He's proven breeder. He's a big boy. He's, I don't know. 14, 1500 grams, plenty, plenty big. I got him from Alan at Creme de la Clutch, another guy that's been fantastic to me. Purchased him, I own him outright, and I've already had him pairing. He's a double recessive visual, and he's a super. So I mean, genetically, he's as challenging to make as a triple recessive is. I catch myself, like I was saying at the front of the video, where I forget to be thankful about things. If you were to ask me what's the ideal double recessive, I would say, well, probably not with hypo. You know, hypo's kind of the least expensive of the recessives. They age phenomenally, though. They do great. I think, they're, I think there's tons of upside on hypo. And I can't look past that accomplishment for myself that here I am heading into my third breeding season without taking out a second mortgage and truly having a viable business with a cash flow that covers expenses and all of that, did I have a double visual super breeding male in my collection that I'm using right now. I'm so excited about it. I'm so thankful for it. So if the acid doesn't go with the ultra male pin girl, I will pair her to this proven breeder and I'll get triple het, hypo, pied, ultra males, pastel. Uh, there'll be lemon blasts in the mix. Yeah, lemon blast, triple het, ultra pied, hypos. That's happening this year. 
I'm very excited. He is going to many other of my females. I've got double and triple het babies coming this year from several pairings. I'm very excited. And those are my top 10. What do you think I'm missing out on? What do you think I need to go for next? It's about time to set goals for 2023. I mean, 2023 has started. So let me know what you think. Thanks for spending the time with me today. Keep it right here on the Proper Royals channel to keep up with everything that we have going on. I'll tell you all about how these pairings go and what I do with these 10 plus an honorable mention hold back animals that I picked up in 2022. I can't wait until I see you in the next video. Until then, see ya.